Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today is Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. Thursday. The only time we do specials like this is when I'm too lazy to do it the week before and figure we'll knock it out in the middle of the next week, or if some shit goes down. And boy, has some shit gone down. Oh lord. <sighs> so, last week we talked a little bit about Blizzard and what's killing. What's killing Blizzard? Is it Asmund Gold? Is it Asmund Gold? It's because he's playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Is it because Adam Holisky said that he was an asshole on fucking Twitter? Is that what's killing Blizzard? Is that it's got to be related to him? Nope. It's Blizzard. <laughs> Blizzard is killing Blizzard <sighs> from the inside out. Yesterday, the Department of Fair Employment and Housing, California Department. Okay, this is a state department. This is not. This is not a billboard. Yo, know, if you've been harassed at work, call me the heavy hitter, <laughs> Edward M. Bernstein Associates. It's not like that. It's not Russ Brown. Okay, it's not like that. This is the state. The state put this out. This is it says the DFEH will refer to them as the DFA <laughs> from now on. The DFA sues California gaming companies for equal pay violations, sex discrimination, and sexual harassment. Women paid less and subjected to gender discrimination and sexual harassment. At Activision Blizzard Incorporated, Blizzard Entertainment Incorporated, and Activision Publishing. So they're they're. There is, they're, they're kind of including a little bit of everything here. Because I they they know, they know that we have a problem with this. Defoe. Defoe. <laughs> Defoe. <laughs> they know we have a problem with separating these things. You know, as much as we've said in the past, Blizzard, Activision, same company, right? This, this whole, this whole case seems to focus on the Blizzard campus. Okay, they're just including everything because for company reasons, for legal reasons, they are still pretty much the same company, subsidiary, whatever. But Blizzard Campus, the one that we all know, some of us have been there. Uh, that's the one that the majority of this case is taking place in or around, right? So they put out a very long, very long filing and i have a few highlights that i would like to go over because it's important that you guys hear some of this stuff so uh, this is the department of fair employment and housing agency of state of california versus activision blizzard incorporated blizzard entertainment and activision blizzard Post, blah, 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 blah. okay hey what's that what's that does what and, and does one through ten inclusive uh and this is a civil rights and equal pay act complaint for injunctive and monetary relief and damages jury trial demanded so i have some highlights here decipher the legalese i don't think i need to decipher some of this stuff so it says unlike its customer base of increasingly diverse players Defendants workforce is only about 20% women. Defendants is Blizzard. Uh, it, its top leadership is also exclusively male and white. The CEO and presidents are uh, present roles are now and always been held by white men. Who does it matter? Who cares if it's held by white men? Uh, right? Right? I'm sure I'm sure there's complaints, right? Uh, hold on, let's go let me do this right here. That way you guys can uh, actually read some of the stuff. There we go. Then we'll do this. All right. Fuck! <laughs> All right, we'll just do this. Just fine. <laughs> just got here. I'm sure to miss anything big. No, man. No, you're good. So down here it says uh, defendants have also fostered a pervasive frat boy workplace. This is the headline that you guys have uh, probably seen the frat boy workplace thing. Culture that continues to thrive in the office. Women are subjected to cube crawls in which a male which male employees drink copious amounts of alcohol as they crawl their way through various cubicles in the office and often engage in inappropriate behavior towards female employees. This is a uh, cube crawls. I, I, that's, that's a that's a new one for me. <laughs> but I believe it. Uh, yeah, I believe it. I mean, it's come from the state, so they probably have evidence. Uh, see, female employees are subjected to constant sexual harassment, including having to continually fend off unwanted sexual comments and advances by their male 
co-workers and supervisors and being groped at the cube crawls and other company events. High-ranking executives and cre creators engaged in blatant sexual harassment without repercussions. In a particularly tragic example, a female employee committed suicide during a business trip with a male supervisor who had brought butt plugs and lubricant with him on a trip. So this is like, this, this already has covered everything from sexual harassment, verbal, to like actual like suicide. So I should have said trigger warning at the beginning of this, just for some of you. Like this is gonna be a pretty sensitive topic for some folks, all right? Apologies not saying that earlier, but yeah. This is like this is some serious shit. Okay? It's not just, oh, he said something about my titties. No, like this is serious shit. All right. <clears throat> So we go down, we see numerous complaints about unlawful harassment, discrimination, and retaliation were made to defendants, human resources, personnel, and executives, including to Blizzard Entertainment President J. Allen Brack. So people have gone to HR, uh, and HR's, HR is in the business of protecting the company, right? They, they, they're there to, to look out for the employee and everything. That's kind of the facade, typically. But uh, they are also in the business of protecting the company, right? Um and so, people have gone to J. Allen Brack. To be fair, saying something about my titties is still serious. Sure, yes, but I would definitely rank suicide well above that. I'm sorry if people are, are like, <laughs> if people disagree with me on this one, but yes, I would definitely rank suicide much higher than groping. Both are bad. We could agree on that. Uh, so, so they even went to J. Allen Brack. Um, and it says, but defendants failed to make, take effective remedial measures in responses to these complaints. And so employees are discouraged. Of course, you know, they say, why can't you, can you help me with this problem? And then nothing happens. Uh, we scroll down a little bit further. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff here. Like, seriously, it, it was hard. I was highlighting entire pages. Um... But yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's difficult to just like try to just, yeah, fuck. Not right, which is where it's just a phrase, arguing the phrase in the statement. Sure. Uh, and another example, a female employee who worked, I mean, like, sure, like, that's fine. Uh, and another example, a female employee who worked at Blizzard Entertainment was assigned to a lower level, denied equal pay and passed over for promotion despite multiple factors that suggest that she earned it. One, highly rated, rated performance reviews. Two, she generated significantly more significantly more revenue in her marketing campaigns than her male counterpart. And three, she ran at almost twice as many campaigns campaigns as her male counterpart. Despite her accomplishments, her male counterpart was invited to have monthly or weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings with the vice president. She was not afforded these same opportunities and surprisingly was passed over for promotion in favor of her male counterpart. Um, uh, we're, we're getting there, Minion. Um, <clears throat> that was... Uh, Oh, was this after the fact? Uh, I don't know if it was after the fact. We'll re we're going to read it. It's at the bottom here. Uh, just to go even further. And again, there's lots of stuff. There's something in here about, yeah, here we go. Female employees were also promoted, uh, not promoted because of defendants' discriminatory practice against uh, pregnant female employees. A female employee working on one game team had assumed some of the responsibilities of a manager, but when she asked her male supervisor about being fairly paid for the work she was actually doing and promoted into that position, the manager commented that they would not risk promoting her as she might get pregnant and like being a mom too much. So it says here, women of color were particularly vulnerable targets of defendant's discriminatory practices. An African-American employee noted that it took her two years to be made into a permanent employee while men hired after her were made permanent employees. She also was micromanaged such that her male co-workers were known to be playing video games without any intervention by her supervisor. But her supervisor would call and check on her if she took a break to go on a walk. Uh, and then another employee says when she requested time off work, her manager made her write a one-page summary of how she would spend that time off of work when no one else had to do any write-up now all of these are allegations right but i want to remind you this is the state the state doesn't do shit unless they have some kind of evidence right they're not going to just walk in here and just be like well these people said well, they said, <laughs> if they get enough people, man, yeah, it's like enough people say one person is a problem. Sure. Right. But some of these are very fucking specific. Yes. And it's a two year investigation. Yeah. Write, write, write a summary of what, well, what are you going to do on your, on your vacation? Maybe submit it to me and I'll let you know if I approve of your vacation. Boy, I can fucking see that happening. Fucking see that happening. 
<sighs> See, here we go. Sexual harassment. There's a whole. There's, there's like it's like separate. It's like separated in categories and shit like that, right? Sex, under the sexual harassment category here, a female employee noted that random male employees would approach her on defendant's work site and comment on her breasts. Female employees working in the World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and supervisors would hit on them, make derogatory comments about rape, and otherwise engage in demeaning behavior. This behavior was known to supervisors and indeed encouraged by them, including a male supervisor openly encouraging a male subordinate to buy a prostitute to cure his bad mood. Yeah, that's, um, that kind of locker room talk shouldn't really exist at work. <laughs> like, you're in the workplace, you're in a professional work environment. Uh, that kind of stuff probably that's best for your garage you know <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe when you're fucking while you're working on your harley or something i don't know man but uh the daily hell you're about mental gymnastics people are going through right now it's crazy it's crazy but blizzard said they rushed it i know they should take more time uh can you link the document i want to share on my discord uh this one is i have it right here boom boom and then bam there you go <clears throat> So yeah, it's not highlighted like this though. This is my private copy because I had to go through read this whole fucking thing. In blatant, in no, oh, this is a good. This is psh. in a blatant example of defendant's refusal to deal with a harasser because of his seniority slash position. Position, Alex Afraziabi, the former senior creative director of World of Warcraft at Blizzard Entertainment, was permitted to engage in blatant sexual harassment with little to no uh, repercussions. Now, I realize that some of you guys are probably like. Who? Who is that? So just a, just a reminder, if you played WoW long enough, you know who this is. Okay? That's the face. The name sounds familiar. The face should definitely ring a bell. All right? We know this guy. We know this guy. Okay? All right? We good? <clears throat> Afraziabi was known to engage in harassment of females that his... So often, <laughs> it was so known for this, that his suite was nicknamed the Cosby Suite. They miss. They said Crosby Suite. Uh, the Cosby Suite after alleged rapist uh, Bill Cosby. That's a problem, man. That feels like that's a workplace problem right there. That should be like hell of fucker looked at. Like there is something really wrong with that. J. Allen Brack, president of Blizzard Entertainment, allegedly had multiple conversations with Afraziabi about his drinking and that he had only that he had been too friendly towards female employees at company events, but gave Afraziabi a slap on the wrist. And if those of you guys who are wondering, where is he now? Well, last year, somebody noticed that Alex had just left. So it seems to have quietly left Blizzard in June 2020. Uh, he, I went looking for his LinkedIn profile. I found the link to his LinkedIn profile, but it leads to nothing. He has vanished. Um, <clears throat> and so it's, it was noticed. It was noticed. But we never really thought anything of it because we just, because there is a period of time there from what, uh, September or somewhere in 2019 when Mike Morheim was was stepping away. Remember, he stepped down and then last year he actually left. Uh, Metzen leaving, then Kaplan leaving. Like, we just we just figured that the, the, the old guard, are le they're leaving, right? But why? Go back to the document here. <clears throat> and here it is in a tragic example of harassment the defendants allowed to fester in their offices. A female employee committed suicide while on a company trip due to a sexual relationship that she had been having with her male supervisor. The male supervisor was found by police to have brought a butt plug and lubricant on his business trip. Uh, another Now, that could have been for him. Uh, another employee confirmed that the deceased female employee may have been suffering from sexual harassment at work prior to her death, specifically at a holiday party before her death. I thought that's what I read. Male co-workers were alleged to be passing around picture of the deceased vagina. So, like, that's weird behavior. Like, I'm on top of being wrong, okay? Like, there's the baseline. Like, that's fucking bad, right? But also, that's fucking weird. Like, on top of it, like, it's not just bad, but it's also weird. Like, who, who... No, <laughs> like just fucking no. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, and like I said, as a suicide uh, survivor, pun pushing people to the breaking point of suicide by various things such as sexual harassment is outright disgusting. Yes, glad you're still with us. Uh, she was probably getting picked on outside of that named event too. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, this is on a company trip. So, I mean, who knows what that could have been for or whatever, but still like... I mean, there's company trips happen all the time. They go to some place and they're doing team building exercise and all that stuff. And um, 
you know, that's where, you know, everybody ends up getting, like, fucking drunk, and then, like, you know, people start taking advantage of other people, and it just becomes, like, a power struggle and shit, you know? And it's just, it's fucking wrong. Everybody news I hear makes me more glad that I canceled my WoW subscription. Uh, you know, when Metzen left, he talked about concerns related to the example for his daughters. Makes me wonder if something happened that woke him up and made him leave. Metzen, Moram, Kaplan, all of them could be implicated in this, and if they are, deserve to go down. We'll talk about that in a second. So, it says right here, uh, retaliation and defendants failure to prevent discrimination, harassment, and retaliation. So, this is, you know, the people are going to try to get help um, and not getting the help they need. And so it says right here, it says, uh, the problems of harassment, discrimination extended to, and at a minimum were known at those to the, at the top. Defendant's former chief technology officer was observed by employees groping inebriated female employees at company events and was known for making hiring decisions based off female applicants. Look now there's only been two CTOs in the past decade. Okay. And they are um, Ben Kilgore, who was 2014 to 2018, and Michael Vance, who's 2020 to present. Now, I don't think this is Michael Vance, um, which process of elimination, probably Ben Kilgore. But at the same time, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's just it's it, maybe there was an interim CTO that popped in there just in time to start doing some sexual harassment and then popped out. Right. Could have happened. It says an employee complained to Blizzard Pre and Entertainment President Jay Allen Brack in early 2019 that employees were leaving due to sexual harassment and sexism. Specifically, this employee, no employee noted that women on the Battle.net team were subjected to disparaging comments. The environment was akin to working in a frat house and that women who were not huge gamers or core gamers and not in the party scene were excluded or, and treated as outsiders. I mean, like, there's a lot here, right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read all these highlights because I highlighted them for a reason. It says defendants fail to take reasonable action in response to these complaints. And that that's that's like they they're saying that it was known at the top <clears throat> this took place in the past like what like probably, probably like seven or eight years we know for a fact actually that one of them she says i'm gonna come out and say i was i was one of these women my incident happened in 2013 at blizzcon i didn't say anything officially until i decided to leave the company last year because of the name recognition and fear of retaliation she's talking about uh alex afraziabi right so this is 2013 we're talking about uh metzen morheim uh kaplan afraziabi like it is likely that they all knew about this that they knew about this and they didn't do enough or they didn't do anything. And that's a tough pill to swallow, right? This is not, we want to, we want to come down to Jay Allen Brack. Absolutely. He's named in this. Sure. But we cannot, we cannot look at historically the leaders who have been here before, who facilitated this type of behavior. It's tough, man. It's tough. Um, Morheim was in charge when Afraziabi was hired. That that uh, alone was is a bad look. I've seen Morheim's name on Twitter a lot recently, but I don't know why. Uh, don't meet your heroes. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is definitely going to be a... Uh, this case is probably going to pull in a few people for, you know, testimony or for whatever. And we'll probably see some of these names of older, older you know, C-level uh, 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 people come, being pulled in leadership. Um... We all want to like Morhaim and Co. because of being the good guys and the old guard, but they're just humans at the end of the day. All fallible and such. Distinctly fallible, indeed. Um, just to go down a little bit further, let me see, I think we have something at the end here. Um, boo -doo 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 -doo. So they start talking about what they want. Like, you know, you, you don't sue just to say, ha, now you're canceled on Twitter, right? This is, they're suing for some kind of Compensation, right? Uh, and so here at the bottom, uh, I have highlighted. Wow, it's a lot. Uh, here it is this uh, DFEH the FU prays that this court issue judgment in favor of the FU and against defendants, ordering compens com com compensatory uh, and punitive damages, unpaid wages, liquidated damages, and other remedies and penalties available under the Equal Pay Act. So equitable relief, including but not limited to reinstatement and or front pay, pay adjustments, back pay, lost wages and benefits, including base pay, incentive pay, pension benefits and awards, and an amount to be proven in trial. So blood, some kind of blood. So whether whether we get a an apology from J. Allen Brack, I mean, he's named in here, 
there's probably some kind of paper trail email or something um, that show that people had requested to speak to him. And then you see that the, the person still maintained position, seniority position for X amount of time. Um, <clears throat> uh, so the, there, there's definitely some kind of evidence there, I'm sure. Uh, the money won't matter for activists. They have enough. But yes, yeah, so that's. So that's where we're at right now. Like, what what are we gonna get for that? Are people gonna go to jail for this? Nah, no. There's not gonna be. There's not gonna be jail. This is. This is. This is. I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about rich white dudes, right? Like, just nothing's gonna happen. The company will pay <clears throat> whatever the money is. It'll be some fines or something, right? So it'll be like you know maybe a hundred million dollars in fines or something like that right company makes a billion dollars so a yeah, hundred million dollars in fines or something right um and then they'll pay it out and that's a that's a lot i think it's gonna be less than that but it, that's, that's a fucking lot uh and that ends up being yeah it's the cost of doing business they've known they've known that this was coming right like the two this two-year investigation they didn't just say oh slam dunk we're fine no worries no they they had contingencies they definitely sat down they were like listen we might lose this. <laughs> In which case, we need to prepare uh, some way to combat it. Right? They already got their money set aside for the payouts. Uh, it won't affect their reputation at all. 99% of the people that buy games will never ever hear of this lawsuit. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's very true. Um, <clears throat> so, Blizzard, uh, Blizzard filed a... Hold on a second. Uh, they actually have a response, and I want to read part of it here for you, um, or read some of it, actually. So they have a response, and they say, no. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it says, we value diversity and strive to foster a workplace that offers uh, inclusivity for everyone. There is no place in our company or industry or in any industry for sexual misconduct or harassment of any kind. And it says the DEFA includes distorted and in many cases uh, false descriptions of Blizzard's past. We have been extremely cooperative with DEFA throughout their investigation, including providing them extensive data and ample documentation, but they refuse to inform us what issues they perceived. <laughs> Well, they're they're investigating them. You know, it's like, <laughs> like I feel like the investigator doesn't really divulge the details of their investigation to the defendant. I, I feel like that's standard practice. <clears throat> they are required by law to adequately investigate and to give good faith discussions with us and better understand and to resolve any claims or concerns before going to litigation, but they fail to do so. I.e., we, we were not given the opportunity to talk our way out of this one, guys. <laughs> And it says here, it says, the picture of the Fu paints is not the Blizzard workplace of today. Over the past several years and continuing since the initial investigation started, we've made significant changes to address company culture and reflect more diversity within our leadership teams. They're all still white. Just We, we already talked about that. Uh, we've uh, And male. Sorry, and male. Uh, we've updated our uh, code of conduct to emphasize a strict non-retaliation focus, amplified internal programs, and channels for employees are basically saying that we have all these programs in place that would stop this from happening. It would totally stop us from happening. We don't actually do anything about any of the previous complaints that come across our desk, so we don't expect anybody to actually use all these new programs that we're putting out for them. But they're there. <laughs> uh, and it says here, <clears throat> and this one was the um, this was this was the one for me. Oh, let me grab let me grab the actual link because it's highlighted here. Uh, it says it is. This type of irresponsible behavior from unaccountable state bureaucrats that are driving many of the state's business best businesses out of California. Woo! Are they, are they really taking it there? They're like, oh, also fake news. Exactly. There you go. Also fake news. They're driving us out of California. Get the fuck out of California if you can, if you can right? Give me a fucking break. I... <clears throat> Blizzard brings in Blizzard has like 10,000 employees or something. I don't know. But a lot of employees, okay? Uh they bring in like billions of dollars to California, okay? Or, or, or as a business, sorry, not to California, as a business. Uh California is not we're not like, "Hey, let's uh let's go look at a, at a, at, a, at a company that employs 10,000 fucking people or however many thousand fucking people they employ uh, and let's find a way to to scoot them out with a with a with a frivolous sexual harassment lawsuit. Let's let's just do that. I don't feel like that's in our best interest. 
<laughs> Maybe California just like values basic workplace safety for people uh, more than they do money. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, if they move, you know they're going to Texas. So <laughs> just, <laughs> they moved to Austin with Elon. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's conspiracy. These unaccountable state bureaucrats. <laughs> How many people will move with them? I don't know. I don't know. This is this is this is a tough one for them to get out of. Boy, they have to they have to dig pretty hard for this one. Uh, <clears throat> now, already we've gotten uh, we've gotten lots of people who have come out, women like all of them, uh, who've come out and s basically sp spoke their their piece about this whole thing. And I'll read something for you. So this is, I left Blizzard after my boss gaslit me so badly my hair started falling out. My profit sharing, which I relied on to make ends meet, was docked due to underperforming. And when I went to HR to fight it with proof against his claims, I was told, maybe you are underperforming. The fucked up part, I hated leaving. Blizzard was my dream job and I loved the work I did there and the people I worked with and still do. To the point of almost returning, but the amount of people who still remain in management position, uh, even after multiple accusations, kept me away. So we're talking 20... This is like, I'm sorry, this is recent. So she's saying now, right now, there's still people <clears throat> who who are in leadership positions who don't deserve to be in those positions. Um, we have, uh, this is from uh, Alarai, which uh, uh, says, it's, it's been 2.5 years and I still carry a lot of pain from my time at Blizzard. I stayed too long, seven years. So she left in 2018 and a half or something like that, right? Uh, and she was there since 2011. So she's that's that's a long time to be somewhere and just to be miserable. Um, so I'm finally at a company where I'm paid, treated fairly, and I want the same for all my old teammates. Don't wait, ladies. You deserve more. She said, I was only 20 when I entered at Blizzard 21 when I joined full time. I thought I was experienced. What I was experiencing was normal. This is just the game industry. Even when I talked to peers, mentors, or even HR, the environment was normalized. HR told me, you're being a brat. For so long, I thought I had to go with the flow to keep my job and get promoted. I felt safe uh, to push back once once I had a little a, a title slash pay that covered my bills. Uh, I made so many excuses to stay at the job because it was a cool it was cool to work at Blizzard. I hope more women don't make my mistake. Um, <clears throat> what is this? If I was Bobby, I'd walk into the office with a handful of Activision execs and uh, a new HR staff and fire the key people. Uh, who should have been well bobby is not necessarily i mean like it kind of it kind of starts at the top you know like it really it really really does uh it kind of started at the top i mean like let's let's take a look here we go um activision boss loses legal battle over sexual harassment case so i mean <laughs> this is 2010 bobby all right so it kind of starts at the top um <laughs> Uh, uh, we have another one here. Call me Questifer. Uh, this is Jennifer Castle Classing. She says, Confession time. I have considered going to the press or a lawyer or both over things that happened to me at Blizzard, but I always felt like it was just me in, in, uh, misinterpreting thing, uh, things. Uh, I always, I would always take time to blame. I would always take the blame for what happened in the end. Make excuses, write things off. But something about seeing all this play out to see other women come forward is so beyond, I'm so beyond proud of them. It takes courage to, uh, that I have yet to muster. Uh, this isn't the, th the Twitter thread where I dish. Sorry, this is the thread where I relate broadly and deeply. And then I think she has another one here um, where she says, yeah, she says, J. Allen Brack pulled all of the women into a room the day after this happened. So this is 2016, right? And it says, so interesting night ended with uh, Abraziabi um, uh, calling me and my friend bitches and pulled a, do you know who I am? So that was a good time. She said, it was weird, but he has since apologized. This is October 9th, 2016. How, how forgiving were women of this kind of behavior in 2016? Five whole years ago. It was weird. It was weird, but he apologized. <laughs> uh, and, and, and she just goes on. She says, she said, he had no idea who I was, of course. And she is the uh, president. She's formerly GDC. So she used to work for GDC proper, which means this probably happened at GDC. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let me see. Go back. Go back. Uh, and so she says, uh, so Jennifer Classing says, uh, JAB pulled all the women into a room the day after this happened and asked us about our concerns. At the time, I thought it was an appropriate response. He assured us that the actions actions had been taken, TM. GDC has always been sus. GDC is 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 
pretty bad. I would say GDC is probably the worst in terms of like uh um bad hmm encounters, I guess. How do you like sum it up? But yeah. Uh it says he remained creative director of WoW for months slash years, then was given an opportunity to lead his own unannounced project. Consequences indeed. And by all the women, I mean every single female identifying person on the WoW team. It was a full room. Dozens of us. Dozens. Uh <laughs> I, I wondered for months afterward what Alex thought and said about us behind closed doors. So, <clears throat> I mean, there's plenty There's plenty of testimony to put to paint J. Allen Brack as the bad guy, for sure. Uh, now, Alana Pierce, Alana Pierce has her own, she, she um, had her own uh, comments to make about general, just general gaming. Uh, I want to play some of that for you guys. The stories that I fucking have just the shit that they did to me like like i was repeatedly like grabbed or groped at work functions and i would complain like to their faces i'd be like don't fucking touch me and then they would be like oh, of course i'm so sorry i don't know what i was thinking and then they would do it again because me reacting to it negatively was what made it funny to them so me going don't fucking touch me leave me alone stop touching me is what made them go oh do it again <laughs> and so they would just keep doing it uh, people would try to kiss me, often just would kiss me without my consent. Somebody like tried to put a shot into my mouth through their mouth. And I was like, I don't want any of this shit. So I went to HR and was like, this place is fucked up. The shit that's happening to me here is super fucked up. And HR sent out this email um, and they were like, Alana is uncomfortable at work events. <sighs> Again, HR's subtle way of protecting the company, right, while posing as somebody who's there to protect the employee. I think, like, this culture of a lot of dudes who were nerds and then got a really cool job and then now think they're hot shit and deserve any of the women in their spaces. Like, the company I was talking about, there was a running bet for who could sleep with me first. I didn't sleep with any of them. But there was a running, like, leaderboard within that office for which of the male employees would get to have sex with me. Like, that's the culture of these places on a global scale. They were like, well, we can. We just have to get a lot of drunk enough or, like, coerce her in the right way or just like push it hard enough and we'll see who can do it first let's like put bets on it like it was fucked <laughs> like yeah i don't know and and hr at any of these companies is generally not very helpful because they try to protect the company i at one company um i didn't want to give details of something that happened i didn't feel comfortable doing so um because even though something bad had happened i was scared to get the person who did it in trouble super complicated um, and they were like, well, we might have to fire you for obstructing company investigation then. And I was like, you're telling me, a person who has dealt with something negative, that I might get fired? What? <laughs> so, <clears throat> HR is for the company, not for the people. Exactly. This is stuff that Christina uh, Mikkonen, uh, a.k.a. Zarina, that she uh, she was talking about. Yeah, she has some of her links in here as well. Uh, she She went off about it early. She says, hey, remember that one time I mentioned that things at that company were pretty bad and all I got was unfollowed by my former friends slash co-workers and blacklisted? Wild! She says, uh, she says, it shouldn't surprise anyone that things have gotten this bad when people point out a problem and get pushed out of their space because the ones hearing it don't like it. The problem still exists. It doesn't magically go away. They wonder why change isn't happening when you have everyone terrified of losing their job. The yes men get promoted. The ostriches bury their heads in the sand and pretend there isn't a problem. Maybe a performative tweet or two. Not your department, not your problem. And it's true. You know, I, we've already seen, I've already seen a couple people on Twitter that are like, yeah, I knew this was happening. Just couldn't say anything or whatever. Right. I'm glad some, I'm glad this stuff's finally getting out. And it's like, that's shitty. Like, that is, like, top-tier shitty, you know? Like, you... 
you knew about it, but you were so concerned with your own job and well-being. And I and, and that part, it's like it's hard for me to be upset with somebody over that because you're trying to make pay the bills. You can barely make the bill. You don't want to rock the boat because something might happen or maybe it's not your job to take care of it or whatever. But like, seriously, you should probably say something. Like, you should probably just say something because clearly they're not listening to the women. Obviously, they're not listening to the women, right? So maybe it does need a dude's voice, and maybe it needs a bro voice to go in there and be like, hey, JB, bro, maybe we should, like, you know, do something about all this sexual harassment and groping and all that shit. Maybe we should fucking do something about that, my guy. Fucking, there we go, right? Psh, right? Maybe we could do something. <sighs> And so, yeah, when people are like, you know, I'm glad this is finally getting out. It's like, fuck me, dude. You know, I, I, I am, I, I know of things that have happened in the industry where, you know, uh, a woman has confided to me a story, right? And some of them are pretty bad. And I've asked them, I was like, do you want me to say something? Do you want me to say something? Um, I don't work with them, though. You know, this is, this is not, I don't work with them. Like, I don't, I'm not in that work environment, right? Uh, some of this stuff's pretty damning, and they don't want to talk about it. And it's like, in those cases, it's like, but I asked, you know, like, I asked. It's like, do you want me to say something? Because I will. Like, I will say something. I'll be happily say something. <laughs> but some of these, some of the things that I've heard are so specific that you can't omit somebody's name, you know? In these situations where you work there, you work at the company, you are obligated to say something. You were obligated to do something about it. You know, like it shouldn't be. It's not it's not the situation that I have where it's like, hey, I'm just a content creator. Just do my own shit on the side. But I will say something because I have a voice. I can help you. I can, I can try to help you if you want it. You work there. It's your job. She got early if you said it, my dude. Yeah. Does anyone ask Bill Cosby's opinion on this shit? Fuck. Fuck Bill Cosby. Olivia, Olivia Grace. We all know Olivia Grace, ODG. She says, this does not surprise me. Uh, she says, you can read the whole thing here. It does not make for a fun read, but having experienced a lot of it firsthand, again, not surprising. She says, I really appreciate the sympathy. I got out fast and moved on, admittedly, to another sexist hellscape, Twitch. See the articles I'm cited in on that one. But I'm doing great now. Life is awesome. I feel empowered. I'm more worried about the people who stayed. So... So, I mean, Olivia's got her own stories. She was only at Blizzard for a short period of time, and she very quickly tried to move her way out of that. And, of course, like she said, into another sexist hellscape. Um, and we've known for a long time that uh, that, that Twitch has, had, has its own problems. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, a little bit of side thing that might come out later, but uh, Emmett Shear no longer has a, he's a CEO in his Twitter bio. Uh, so, and it hasn't been that way for a couple months. We just recently noticed this. So it's entirely possible that he's no longer the CEO. But now I've said before that may or may not be a good thing because we don't know who's going to be put in charge if he leaves. But anyways, I, Olivia is actually, she deserves better. Olivia will fuck a dude up for trying some shit. At least I hope she would. Physically, I know she can, right? And I would love to see it. I would love to see, I would love to see somebody get taken down by Olivia. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> she will fuck a dude up, man. <laughs> I'd hand her the chair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm not going to stand up for you. Can we, here's a chair. <laughs> so, uh, streamers, I've, I've gone through and I was digging through some tweets earlier today. And, you know, there's a lot of streamers who are saying that, you know, they're putting the feelers out. This is Indy Garona. Uh, she says, uh, putting the feelers out for games that you'd watch me stream until uh, if slash when I feel I can in good conscience stream WoW again. What do you guys think? Playing a comeback stream on Monday? Et cetera, et cetera. So in, uh, in Corona's, you know, case, it's like, and for a lot of people, it's like, I can't in good conscience play this game. This is where I was when the Blitz Chunk thing happened. Uh, I was playing, we were streaming classic for like two, three weeks. And then I was just like, can't do it. Like, I just couldn't do it anymore. Like, it just, it just rubbed me the wrong way, you know? And so that's when I gave, I gave Blizzard, I gave them six months. You guys remember this? I said, I said they have six months to like come up with something or whatever. And they did make a number of statements in that six months and they actually reinstated uh, Blitz Chung. Uh, and so after six months, I think I, I think I still did not resub. <laughs> I think in like maybe October I resub for a few months and then I shut it off in like earlier this year. Um, but uh but yeah i've i've been done with uh with wow games for a while the blitz chunk thing really rubbed me the wrong way it really rubbed me the wrong way 
Um, but I mean, it depends. You know, you you think you know? I I I saw this as Ira says, "Where are all these people with Blitz Chung?" And you know, it's it's hard to it's. I know it's hard for some people to connect. Uh, another it's hard for some people to connect another person's tragedy to their you know to, to their ongoing entertainment their lifestyle they're saying you know it's okay if um you know it's not it's, it's not my concern if if you know somebody in another country is experiencing some kind of whoa so a streamer did some protesting on stream or an esports per personality did something uh did a protest on stream and so he got banned well he shouldn't have done that you know they'll make excuses right uh and it's it it just gets incrementally closer and closer to home until it actually happens at home which is what's happening here it's like we have now an actual case that is yeah everyone has a line yeah exactly that is now it's happening here so now by supporting these games and you know playing it you are i mean you are pretty much supporting you could say, you could say, you know, I'm supporting the devs because the devs, whatever. Now the devs are going to find jobs. Trust me, the devs will find jobs. Okay. We already know it's, a, it's, it's, it, it, there's jobs galore out there. We've seen the article. We've seen the articles and the headlines. There's jobs galore out there. They will find jobs. Right. Uh, and you said people defend. Yeah. What, what someone think of the devs? Yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. I think the best thing, if you're somebody who wants to keep playing World of Warcraft, I think the best thing you could do is what you've been doing, which is just shut the fuck up. Don't give me your excuse as to why you're still playing the game. I'm not going to judge you for playing the game. I will judge you for defending why you're playing the game. Because in defending why you're playing the game, you are also saying that you are fine with paying, paying money to a company who is currently in a suit with some pretty fucking fine details on shit that they have done. For me, it's hard to take the uh, gotta support the devs reasoning when people still get laid off when they do support them. Yeah, exactly. That's what uh, uh, Jason Winter said the same thing, and they, they do. They they lay people off, and then later on, they they uh, open up those uh, same positions. <laughs> uh, wonder what Laura's take on, on this is. Well, he can't comment yeah like cypher said he can't comment and and i wouldn't want i would definitely not go to him for like a a, a you know on the record comment especially because he still works there right um and what is this one so when criminal charges criminal charges come up for these investigation victims coming forward do we repurpose the word blizzcon to describe them oh god <laughs> please jesus Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so he says, hey, I know I don't exactly stream to a packed house or anything, but I don't know if I can in good conscience continue to stream while wow, in light of current events, uh, news regarding their behavior and behavior of the management. Right. Um, so this is there's been a few of these. And one of the biggest ones, the number seven, the number seven World of Warcraft steamer streamer in the past 365 days. Tally. I think a lot of you guys probably know Tally if you play WoW. Uh, at least if you watch any while, for sure, you know, Tally. Uh, it says, I wasn't planning to play WoW on stream for the next week, and now I won't stream it afterward until there is some sort of statement with a, with a plan of action and explanation. I don't know how deep this rabbit hole goes, and I'm scared of the end result. So, yeah, Asmongold's already said, he has said, I mean, everybody. Yeah, Asmongold said his thing. I looked at, I looked at Soda Pop, and Soda Pop hasn't really said anything yet. Um, but, yeah. the <laughs> Nobody... Nobody, nobody, no content creator that I've seen has come out and been like, or, or at least nobody with any kind of like reach. I've, I've, having dug through lots of, of Twitter <laughs> this morning, I have seen some like, you know, five follower people say, I'm going to keep playing wild because of blank. But what I'm saying is people that have a platform, uh, Nobody in that regard. Like Soda Poppins not saying, well, I'm still gonna play it. Shroud's not saying, oh, I'm still gonna play it, right? Like these people who have a platform are saying they're gonna stop. And this is bad news for Blizzard, right? Like this is bad. Bl Blizzard is already in, in in a bad way, right? With everybody bailing, we talked about last week, everybody jumping ship to XIV. Um, and then this happens. Like now, now there's there's a bit of shame. Like if you're playing World of Warcraft, you're streaming World, World, World of Warcraft, sorry. Um, like there's probably a bit of shame there, you know, or, or maybe there's not, maybe you don't give a shit. Maybe you don't give a shit. You're just like, ah, fuck women, you know? Uh, 
Don't tell me there's an F. So many splices, we're good. Um, we actually had some, uh, we had a couple co- podcasts. I mean, it goes on and on. There's Fallout, dude. Like, you know, comment about the future of Snowbound, the Blizzard podcast. They're basically saying they're going to hold off doing more shows. Charlie Intel, which is a Call of Duty, a huge Call of Duty account. What is it? Like 2.4 million? Yeah, 2.4 million. It says, we stand with all the female developers in this industry who have been affected in workplace, uh, in workplace by harassment. Harassment should uh, have no place in any workplace ever. As industry, gaming must do better. We will continue to cover Call of Duty on this account, as we've done for the last 10 years, as we still believe in the game and the developers across studios who put their heart and souls in the franchise, and we will continue to advocate for accountability at Activision Blizzard by using our platform and voice in this space. There needs to be serious accountability at the top of Activision Blizzard. The group leaders like Blizzard's J. Allen Brack uh, and CEO of Activision Activision Bobby Kotick should step down and follow real change from the top. So this is a pretty big statement from a primary news source for Call of Duty um, with 2.4 million followers. Like this is pretty. That's a pretty fucking huge statement. Uh, let's see, yeah, what is Tally? Was it Tally Sun? And um, what have they said? Uh, let's see. It is horrifying to remember that there are more victims at Blizzard than abusers. Uh, there must be accountability. Current heads must roll, and every bro who was allowed to leave quietly must be dragged back to the dock. That's right. That's right. Um, I know I hear all these people are all for accountability, but have y'all heard of arrests? Nah, they're not gonna, they're not gonna arrest anybody, Felwing. Come on! Come on! When's the last time you've seen... Rich white dude walk out of somewhere with, with fucking... Come on. Come on. So... Right now, it's just like... We need individual accusers to take these assholes on. Making get cardiac arrest. Hey. So right now, Blizzard's in a space where they need to determine what they're going to do going forward in terms of how they're going to feel this. It's going to be a PR... It's a PR nightmare for them, right? Uh, it's a legal nightmare for them, too. But, you know, ultimately, it, it's not like they're going to come in. It's not like California's going to come in and break up the company. They'll just move to Texas and take with them all their liberal... Whatever. <laughs> liberal ease. Uh, and so, um, they're in a position where they, they have to... Uh, Feel this somehow. There is a uh, BlizzCon line coming up sometime soon, right? Let me see. BlizzCon line. Um, let me see. 2021. February 19th. 20, oh, that's, 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 there's one later this year, not earlier this year. Um, is it February 2022? Okay. That's pretty far in the future. You know, that's pretty far. Uh, so we will see but this, this to me, I mean, I, it already felt like BlizzCon was just done, right? But like now, I really feel like BlizzCon is done. Like na- now, I really, really feel like there, we're never gonna get another BlizzCon again. I think it's just fucking done. Um, and, and I think it's 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 because of this. Uh, what is this? Oh, so this is a note from Bungie. Uh, let's see. Bungie is built on empowering our people, no matter who they are, where they're from, or how they identify. We have a responsibility to acknowledge, reflect, and do what we can to push back on a persistent culture of harassment, abuse, and inequality that exists in our industry. Um, <clears> Hot <throat> Q&A panel. Is this, is this an out-of-the-office sexual harassment trip? Fuck! Eric, goddamn! Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, and as always says, uh, it's our responsibility to ensure the type of behavior is not tolerated at Bungie at any level and that we never excuse it or sweep it under the rug. While the accounts on this week's news are difficult to read, we hope they will lead to justice, awareness, and accountability. We have zero tolerance policy at Bungie for environments that support this toxic, toxic culture, and we are committed to rooting them out to defend those who are at risk. Uh, and so it's just scroll down a little bit. It says our goal is to continue to improve the experience for everyone looking uh, working at Bungie and to do our part in the game industry as a whole to be more welcoming and inclusive. You know, it's it's. I'm glad they're saying it, but like, if it was EA that was getting slammed with 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 this, Blizzard would have released something like this, right? The thing is, this kind of behavior, while Bungie may be better. Then some, uh, this kind of behavior is not, like, this is not just a Blizzard problem. 
Riot has had ongoing issues regarding this. They don't have a state. They don't have the state of California breathing down the neck or anything like that. But 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 they have definitely had plenty of articles uh, written about some of the things that they have done. I uh, I mean just just yesterday, just yesterday, Ubisoft Singapore just keep adding to the pile. Employees face a French ceiling. It says a new report into the Skull and Bone Studio reveals complaints about pay disparities and more. It's an industry problem. has been for a while. And it's not even an industry problem. That Alana Pierce video that I was playing for you guys, that wasn't even related to games. She was talking about tech in general. Like, it, and, and she's right. Like, she's like, I feel like it's just a bunch of, you know, nerds who strike it big with a product or whatever and they feel like they're hot shit and they deserve every woman in their vicinity every woman in their vicinity uh and and she's not she's not trying to be she's not saying that like disparaging against all nerds or anything like that but it makes sense like if you think about somebody who's maybe an introvert maybe doesn't get out and, and, and like they're they're like always at home they only operate online they have no social out, outlet of any sorts they don't know how to communicate people with people in person so they don't they don't think of the boundaries of the things that they're doing and maybe they don't even drink that much and then they hit big and they go to parties and they drink and all that shit they don't know how to fucking conduct themselves so they do things and then when they see they get away with them they think it's the norm oh yeah i could just do this i could just walk over to alana pierce and just like talk about her titties to her face she's not gonna do shit or what the fuck was it give her a shot with my mouth whatever the fuck that is <laughs> what the fuck I don't see it in my space, but my team is literally only men, so go figure. Fuck me. <sighs> it's important to know this isn't some new phenomena. It's just in today's environment, uh, able to be more noticed and announced. This has been going on for decades, but hopefully this is building to much more, much needed change. Um, it's like snowballing, but with alcohol. How would you, how do you know that I would even know what snowballing is? <laughs> who says, who says I know what that means? Huh? Huh? <laughs> but you do. I did not say what the, what on earth? <laughs> We've seen your search history. I know, huh? <laughs> All right. So, so again, like if you work somewhere and you witness this stuff happening, uh, like you should say something like you should say something, you know, like you should talk to and, and, and here's the thing. Like if it's happening, if this is happening to women in your workplace, uh, there's a good chance that the, that the women are not going to have a voice in countering this because they're being treated like products or property in a sense, you know, they get, Oh yeah, just talk about your titties or talk about rape or talk about whatever, you know? So maybe it is, maybe it, for those kinds of offenders, it does take a fellow bro to like, that w could, could more easily relate uh, <laughs> because you have a dick <laughs> to talk to them and to say, Hey, you know, maybe we don't, maybe we don't talk about that kind of stuff. And you know, if you have to, if you have to frame it in a way that maybe is not the most kosher, you know, like if you would be like, hey man, look man, I don't want you to get in trouble, man. You're gonna get in trouble for this if you gotta be careful. You know how it is, these play with all the woke and cancel and all that stuff. Whatever, man, if you stop the harassment, then guess what? You stop the fucking harassment, right? And I feel like that's, that's a, <laughs> fuck you, what the fuck? I feel like that's the first step. That's a first step. Be a bro for your female work or co-workers, exactly. Mike literally looks at naked women all day. Jesus Christ. I recently spoke up as much as I could and asked my manager to hire for our, uh, for our open positions in a way that makes our team more diverse. We have enough dudes, please. Yeah. Um. Sometimes you got to put the meds in the cheese. Boy, I like that. Sometimes, it's true. Sometimes you got to put the meds in the cheese. So I got fired from a titty bar I worked at because the manager on duty kept harassing one of the girls. Uh, I was bouncing that night uh, and he tried to follow after a car. I threw his ass in the concrete and his dad, the owner, fired me the next day. Fucking A. It's not that. So uh, I am 32 year old male working at a business owned and run by managers who are all 50 Boom, to baby. 70 years old. How the fuck did that happen? Okay, well, Super Punt, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Oh, it reset. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I see. Uh, we employ high school girls, college students as cashiers and flower watering people, uh, etc. Voices go unheard to people who are 6 to 70 years old in a rural town and no less. Uh, so city officials aren't exactly helpful. 
helpful. Yeah. Well, I mean, just try. You know, whatever you can do to try. If you got to body slam your boss or whatever, I mean, you know. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you got to do. What are they going to do? It's like, hey, man, this, this, I, I, I stopped a potential rape, officer. Off the top rope. Exactly. Exactly. We're not done with Blizzard, though. At least Jason Schreier is not done with uh, with Blizzard. <laughs> Body slamming 67-year-old. Yeah. So Blizzard botched Warcraft 3 remake after internal fights. So Warcraft 3 came out. No surprise. Uh, it was a failure on like every on every front really it was just it, it did not it, they sean murray the shit out of that all that stuff they said we were gonna have nope and at the same time they also fucked up warcraft 3 the classic version that people were still playing <laughs> they fucked everything up so, this article basically just goes over. It says, eight months later, the Classic Games team was dismantled. So, they released it, and they said they are going to put all these fixes in. Eight months later, team was dismantled. 18 months later now. We're 18 months out. Basically, nothing's changed. Warcraft 3. Yeah, they killed it. They killed, they killed the old one with the new one. And then, let the new one die. Uh, I forgot they removed the original Warcraft 3 too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Instead of making things turn, that touch turn to gold, they make it t turn to shit. Exactly. Uh, so, some of the things discussed, it says that they restricted hiring budgets and a small team with an AFK director, Rob uh, Breidenbecker, who apparently was just spent most of his time traveling and not necessarily managing a team. Uh, it was a small team. They couldn't hire more people. There was a daunting task. All these things they had to do. And a lot of stuff they did do, like they re-recorded all the voices and everything uh, for all the voiceovers. And they would retool some of the cinematics and all that. And they ended up scrapping all of that. And it says here... Uh, Fried, who, de who departed the uh, departed the project as it was being rescoped, uh, pinned the blame of for these shifts on Blizzard's corporate parent. I am, he says, quote, I am deeply disappointed that Activision would actively work against the interests of all players in the manner that they did, he said. He added that it was quite telling that Mar Morheim had resigned just weeks before Warcraft 3 Reforged was presented in November 2018 at BlizzCon, the company's annual fan convention. The developers of the game blamed Bryden Becker and other executives. Leadership quote says leadership seemed totally out of touch with the velocity and scope of the project until extremely late in development. Senior voices in the department warned leadership about the impending disaster of Warcraft on several occasions over the last year or so, but were ignored. And by the end of 2019, the Classic Games team had brought in help from all across Blizzard to finish Warcraft 3 or Forge, but it would not be enough. So. Could this be WoW's Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 moment? They have a lot of other problems I gotta fix first. <laughs> I have some serious fucking problems. Uh, don't look at the at stocks. Look at the magic response. There are crickets. Yeah, we've we uh, as far as I know, we've not gotten any other responses. Right? Here's what will probably happen in term like this. We already know this is a shit show, right? This is a shit show that'll probably never be resolved. They're just going to ignore it, and that's it, all right? Or, or Diablo 2 will come out, and it'll be a huge savior, and then they'll give Warcraft 3 Reforged to Vicarious Visions, who will then re-reforge it <laughs> for release. So, <laughs> but yes, this this is, this is an absolute... Uh, shit show that's probably never going to uh uh to come out or never never going to correct itself um but in terms of any kind of response from blizzard outside of that initial response where they said they were going to pack up their toys and leave the state of california um i had imagined we were probably going to get something tomorrow night so friday night typically it's when they do something they'll announce something or they'll put out a comment or something like that uh and then that way it gets lost in the mix for the weekend. So they could say they made a statement, but coverage won't really happen, right? So be on the lookout for that. It's probably going to happen tomorrow night. Uh, I didn't see anything leading up to this today. So 3 a.m. Saturday. Yeah. For the, for, yes, actually, actually for the EU, that's exactly when it would be. That's exactly when it would be 3 a.m. on fucking Saturday. So 
so that's it for Blizzard. We wait for a response. Uh, and I hope the response is from J. Allen Brack. I feel like it has to be J. Allen Brack or Bobby. One of the two. It cannot be anybody else. It cannot be Blizzard leadership or anything like that. No, it has to be penned by one of by one of those two. Uh, you hope Brack stepping down. I feel like this might be Brack stepping down. Um, this is, I mean, this is a lot. This is a lot. Uh, and he's already done one. We're gonna do better speech with the blitz chunk thing. Uh, I don't think he's gonna do another one. <laughs> Uh, is there a way to track active subscriber count for WoW or player count for Blizzard games like how Steam does? I think the best thing you could do is use Sully Gnome to view what their viewership is. View what their viewership is. Um, let me see. Uh, here we go. So what you could do is go here. Sully Gnome, and then you can see. This is a total streamers. We'll go to games, actually. Uh, and then we'll have to find World of Warcraft. I don't think it's on this list. <laughs> <laughs> world let's see is here world of warcraft oh warcraft okay war world of war uh so yeah i would view this and i would look like past 14 days past 30 days i mean it's hard to tell because there was this push here with the, with the, the new raid so obviously a lot of people are playing but uh i would say look at the fall off after this 30 days 90 days to see what the trajectory is in terms of viewership on twitch because uh and not even necessarily just viewership but like who is actually streaming right because world of warcraft channels here uh we could see just how many uh, how many channels are streaming it so we could see if there's a fall off over time we need time though right like this is happening in right now in real time so we need more time to to figure this out um after 70 consecutive years of canceling my sub yesterday my heart hurt so damn bad as was home when i was literally homeless but it's not reporting any numbers but they've been mining making up lost sub money with store mounts Twitch viewer doesn't mean much. XIV has always been low, but uh, I've been arguing more popular for years. I'm just saying, like, it is a metric. It is a metric. We don't have access to metrics, Kimo. So this, but this is a metric that we can use. Um, because if fewer people are streaming it, then we can argue that fewer people are probably playing it. But it will take time. It will take time. Um, especially if you look at the Delta. Exactly. And the gamma and the lambda and all that stuff. Did I do that right? All right, so <laughs> gotta keep an eye on game statistics bot in Discord. Yes, that's right. We do have the game statistics box boss blah a uh, bot, uh, and that's how we will track it internally. Um, Yagarix has access to all of them. I think maybe we could look and see. We could look and see. Uh, with all these MMOs on the horizon, this is definitely blood in the water. Mm -hmm. Mike's a bad streamer. Dang! <laughs> Dang. All right, let me see. Moving on. We do. We have more. We have more. So, um, a couple weeks ago, we talked a little bit about... Uh, a little bit. We did a whole episode on Curacao. And it was all about uh, gambling... Online gambling and how some of these companies, I did a huge deep dive. We went uh, and pulled out all of the receipts for everything. Uh, we could see that, uh, you know, these companies are basically shell companies or throwaway companies. Um, and so, uh, uh, H3H3, uh, they came back for a, uh, like, I think they were like took a hiatus or something like that. And I guess they came back. Ethan, yeah, Ethan Klein, but uh, and also uh, uh, Hel Helen, Helen, Hella, Hella. Shit, I forget her name. Um, but yeah, he's he's back on Twitch. He's doing shows. He brought Train on Train and um, what is it? Train and uh, 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 XQC brought them on to discuss uh, Hilla. Thank you uh, to discuss this online gambling thing. And they totally had, uh, Ethan had both of them just scrambling, trying so hard to dodge questions. Uh, I want you guys just to take a listen. Also, um, Ethan went the same route that I did. He found some of the paperwork and all that, but he, he took a step further. I wish I would have done, uh, but he actually pulled up on Google street view, the address that we found on the license on the actual license. Uh, he pulled up the address and this is what he saw. 
Look at this. Look at my screen, you guys. Train wreck. This is their headquarters, bro, on Google Maps. This is where. Give me a second here. No, no, no. This is important. This is where State How, oh Casino's my. located, oh you guys. Oh my God! See, see. How have we they, gone from yeah, the argument yeah. of kids promoting and catering located. to kids? Whoa, whoa, and now whoa. we're talking. That's train talking, by the way. And he's saying he's trying to say, how are we talk? How are we shifting subjects to this? And Ethan's trying desperately to be like, no, 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 no. You should really look at this. Deflect, deflect. This is their crypto. Oh, this is the. This you is got the like you say one hundred percent confidently. That this is not a scammer business. What? Train. I mean, honestly, can you? Because it looks. It sure looks like a fucking scam. Look at this. Uh, this it, is their address. Maybe it's not. This is their address, Yikes. you guys. Yikes. Okay, okay. Let's this end, is let's their end. headquarters. Let, Holy let's fuck. Go back to, can you, uh, Holy uh, fuck. This is a look shed look. in the fucking ass woods okay. of somewhere. That's an issue you bring up overall. It's not an issue you bring up by lumping the, the people in and painting them as as evil or some shit. I don't want you guys Wait. doing this. Wait. No, no. Wait, what? No, 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 no. They, they're in a shed, this is you guys. crazy to me. <laughs> they're in a shed. This is their headquarters. Wait, I'm this confused. Is this is a, I, 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 I want to understand what XQC's argument is there. They're in a shed. Yeah, XQC, it I'm seems sure every like fucking you've been company in the United States the is in a shed, a too. Do you what does it do with anything you brought up? This is some virtue signaling bullshit. No, this is a totally legit company. You're going with the wrong things to get at it. It's... You're we lunking. started this with streaming on Twitch to children. This is the then website on the bottom of the they, they won't, so they won't argue, they won't answer anything. Ethan completely has him cornered, and he's just trying, he's just like, ooh, ooh, and then you hear XUC just act, just fucking word vomit. Train wreck. Let's bullshit. go visit them. Train, Let's go bad. see. Oh Let's go straight them feedback it's all bad. Uh, to it's their all shed. Bad, but this makes it doubly bad. Do you understand? Like, there's a difference between, uh, like, this like, isn't care. Something is bad, which we all agree on. Everybody with half a brain knows that these, these, Bro, I, the these, 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 company, these, the Kiriko company, dude, it's just, it's just, yeah, oh yeah, that was, that was the song on the other side. Um, no, let's get a word out. Yeah, they're just, they're just like Bill O'Reilly style, just gonna yell and yell and yell until eventually they move on. What a very entertaining stream this is. Actually, I watched like a good hour of it. And oh my god, it was <laughs> just, just chaos, just chaos. They couldn't, they couldn't answer anything, and it was all, it was just all, just make. Why are we change subjects? And you, you paint us like this, and then you move on. You gotta give us time to like focus and all this stuff. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I guess here. I got, I got you guys. I got you guys. Oh yes, yes. Oh, it's just, it's just lovely. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's, it's been, a, it's been a few weeks. It's been a few weeks uh, that since uh, you know we we started reporting on this and um, nothing has really happened. <laughs> like there's been basically no movement. So maybe nothing will happen. I don't know. Um, let me see. So uh, still don't understand how SQC is still a streamer after such harassment allegations, streamer harassment, and now this. Man, I don't know. Cause he's bringing the money, man. Bring the money. He's like number one streamer, man. Number one streamer. So, speaking of trying to fix things, the FTC votes unanimously to enforce right to repair. This is a big deal. Anybody who owns any piece of electronics and has ever felt like, man, I wish I could repair this thing, but I can't. Because I'm going to avoid the warranty or because of it requires a special tool or because I don't have access to any kind of documentation that tells me how to fix things. This is a huge win. This is a huge, huge win for, for a lot of people. Um, if you didn't know, there's manufacturers are always trying their, their damnedest to prevent the consumers from fixing things, right? Because the consumer is going to do one of two things. They're going to come in and pay for a repair or they're going to throw away and buy another one. Um, is that the one that Rossman do spearheaded? You know what? I don't, I don't remember his name, but I know that there was one gentleman who, uh, he had a YouTube channel or has a YouTube channel. Um, and he, yeah, Rossman was big on this. Okay. Yeah. He probably has a video up on it right now. Um, uh, went for the environment as well. Less e-waste. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, it says, so what do they do now? What they'll do now is make every part proprietary. Yeah. Um, he has more than videos, literally going to lawsuits about it. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to play down what he does. I've only seen a few videos of his when he's talking about it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, this is, this is, this is a huge win for a lot of people. Uh, manufacturers is getting too much control over, over what 
and the consumers can do. When you spend a thousand dollars on a piece of hardware and then something happens and you want to fix it and it avoids the warranty or you can't whatever, like it's it, and because there's no documentation or whatever. Like it that's that's just fucking bullshit. Um See, I remember he did a witness on a right to repair case here in, in Norway. Awesome. So it's come uh, so far that farmers have uh, hacked their vehicles. Yes. And actually, oh, thank you so much for bringing that up. Uh, yeah, that that's actually a main thing. It's not necessarily just for you know people who have phones or people who have whatever uh, and they want to fix it. This is this actually was this is the top and the bottom. Right. And the farmers. Yeah, the farmers were a big part of it uh, because they would spend a quarter million dollars on a piece of farming equipment uh, and they wouldn't be able to fix it. John Deere, yeah. Uh, or they wouldn't be able to install some kind of firmware or something that would that would make their jobs easier. Uh, Zibrios, as someone who owns tractors, uh, this has been a huge issue forever. John Deere tractors are assembled in such a way that you can't remove the starter without a special wrench. Yeah, see? See? Exactly. And, you know, they have a monopoly on shit. Like, I mean, it's fucking John Deere. <laughs> it's fucking it's basically synonymous with farm equipment um john deere was reselling information that they were getting from the farmers oh i bet oh i bet i bet um so yeah the exposure yeah as you said exposure the farmers brought to this uh it really helped the case absolutely it was like it's, it's one of those things that the tech bros and the farming the, the rural community could just commute could just uh, uh come together on man so it's fucking this, you know those two fist meme you know like yeah i can't do that yeah, yeah like that um i'm surprised automotive industry hasn't jumped on this since they are already forced to do this uh say if there is w one workforce you don't have to want to fuck with it's farmers <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is true. No, it's true. Um, and lastly today, speaking of fucking farmers, I don't fucking know. Um, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Deal Double G has been streaming, you know, pretty regularly. And he um, has been doing it with no audio. <laughs> so he's here. He is. He's uh, he's streaming. I think it's like NBA or something. Um, what is he playing here? Actually, oh no, it's playing football. Um, and we'll turn up the audio. Just nothing. This is two hours. Two hours. <laughs> he did this like three or four days in a row. Just, just our res, our, our resident boomer. <laughs> You can see everybody is in chat. Just really. <laughs> oh my God, this name. Kareem Abdul Jabbar Jar Binks. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> So, so yeah, Snoop's been just been streaming just for some days. No, no audio. Got, gotta love him, man. Gotta love him. At least he's playing the game this time. All right. So one way to get yeah to not get a DMCA. That's what he's looking for. That's what he's looking for. He's like no DMCA here. Oh man, beautiful. <laughs> Did you check out the video of the Camelot Chain being uh, on or, on on the death's door? Uh, and the kicks are losing their money. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do any coverage of that. This other stuff took precedent over that. Uh, but, but that's it for today. That's it for the news. Thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. Appreciate you guys through the blip. Uh, who stuck it out? I appreciate you guys very, very much. Chat, lovely, lovely co-host. Just, you know, just use your voice. Use your voice. Use your bro voice. Your big bro voice. Help women out, man. It's not hard. Thank you so much. Say goodbye to YouTube. Say goodbye to YouTube. Oh, that's probably inappropriate to do on fucking subjects like this. Yep. So I'll see you guys later. Chat hang out.